<laughs> Hello. On this episode of Bondi Vet. He's the absolute centre of this little girl's universe. Chris races the clock to remove a massive tumour that's taking over his tiny patient's body. This is just millimetres away from, from absolute disaster. Hello. Will chemotherapy help a much-loved Labrador live to see another day? God didn't really gift us with children, but he did give us our pets. And we go behind the scenes at Sydney's Guide Dog Breeding Centre to meet a brand new batch of life-changing pups. It's really amazing to think that one of these little pups could eventually help someone with low vision and blindness become so much more independent. You make my world a better place. Come on, there's your girl. When I see Labrador puppies, there's a reason why they're Australia's most popular dog. They have these really cute little waggly bottoms, they have these absolutely gorgeous little heads, and you just immediately fall in love with them. But what makes these dogs really special is their role as guide dogs. Guide dogs bring freedom and independence to so many people, and they 100% transform lives. In this really special episode of Bondi Vet, we're gonna take you behind the scenes of the Guide Dogs Breeding Program, and we're gonna follow this litter of puppies on their journey to become canine superheroes. At the Sydney Guide Dog Centre, a very special delivery is taking place. Hey, Leah. Hello. <laughs> oh, you wanna get out, do you, hey? Leading the welcoming committee is the centre's head vet, Dr Caroline Moser. What's coming on? It's really amazing to think that one of these little pups that's coming in today could eventually help someone with low vision and blindness become so much more independent. This is Beanie. So he's the only yellow one in the litter. <laughs> Six weeks ago, Mum Yara gave birth to one gold and five black puppies at a guide dog volunteer's home. So it's a big day for them today. They're moving from their whelping home into the guide dog centre. There we go. For the next two weeks, the pups will stay at the centre until they're ready to move in with their puppy raisers. It's really important to reduce their stress as much as possible. And that's why we're basically just being led by the puppies today. Good boy. Lunchtime. That way. Where are you going? Grass is always greener in someone else's bowl. <laughs> Pretty bold, these guys, they're not too scared. We like to expose them during this period to new environments and that will help their resilience long term, but also support them during that exposure. <laughs> Kara, come. We always bring their mum in with them when they come into the centre and that helps them to look to mum and mum just goes, no, it's okay, I know this place, this place is fine. So she gives them the support that they need as well. While the puppies sleep off their big morning, Dr Caroline's busy day continues, overseeing the guide dog breeding program. Come on, watch your tail. He's getting a bit excited. Today, breeding male Huxley is making an important donation, with a little help from a female in season. Is Huxley ready? <laughs> He's ready. Okay. Come on. Okay, get him Good boy, Huxley. Good boy. Good girl. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to collect some semen from Huxley. Huxley is one of our breeding boys. We tend to find our breeding boys love coming to the vet room. <laughs> the reason we're collecting semen is that we like to freeze it and store it for later. Good boy, buddy. What I'm going to do now is I've got three mils. I'll give it a little bit of a shake. The machine has told us that there's 735 million sperm within this sample. He's about average for our boys. <laughs> We've had some boys that have given us over a billion in a sample, so. It's really exciting. So from that one sample that we got today, he produced enough to inseminate three girls. And what's really good is that we can keep it in the tank indefinitely. 
In this program, we're trying to improve the health of the whole colony and breed a dog that is able to confidently guide someone throughout their life. Good girl. Caroline's next appointment is with heavily pregnant Coco. Oh, you're big. Today, what we're doing with Coco is we're finding out how many pups are in her belly. You're a good girl. And it's really important to know how many are in there because when she's actually whelping, we want to be able to know how many to expect. How many do you reckon? I'm going to go seven or eight, I think. Oh, I'm going to go eight to nine. Andrea and I have a friendly, um, competitive nature, I think. Good job. What a good girl. X-ray. One, two. There's so many, they're all jumbled Ooh, on top yeah. of each other. So what have we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then an extra head there. Yeah, nine. So I was right. Yep. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Four days later, Coco's big moment arrives. So it's 1am and Coco has started her labour. She's been in pre-labour for a couple of hours now and first puppy is on its way. There's always so much anticipation. It will actually be two years approximately before we know whether or not those dogs are going to make guide dogs. Here's one of our little babies. This one's a girl. So it's all really exciting and then we've got to wait and see what happens. Good boy. Let's go. Come on. It's now been two weeks since Yara's pups arrived at the guide dog centre. There we go. <laughs> and little Utah has started Good the boy. next phase of his journey with puppy raiser Meredith. It is a bit like having a newborn when you get them when they're eight weeks old and you do have to get up in the night and take them out to go to the toilet. You do have to settle them sometimes. Good boy, come, sit. I describe it to others as though I'm just borrowing the dog. So it's not mine. I love it like it's mine, but I always know that this dog has a future that's not with me. Stay. Utah is an exceptionally good little puppy. So during the course of the day, we'll do like a five minute little training session where he'll learn to sit, stay, drop, come. Beautiful. Good boy. And Utah, give, give, yes, good boy. Yes, you get lunch too now, don't you? <laughs> Not yet. Sit. Good boy. He's a lovely, relaxed little boy. Come. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. He doesn't cry. He doesn't have major separation anxiety. He's, he just listens and he's very gentle and will make a perfect guide dog in the future, I'm quite sure. After a year in Meredith's care, Utah will return to the Guide Dog Centre to start his official training. It's incredibly hard to hand them back every time. There is a lot of tears, um, but you do have to just keep reminding yourself that this dog could go on to change a person's life. Bondi Clinic, a devoted dad is waiting for Chris to examine his 12-year-old daughter's pet mouse, Pino. He's about a year old. My daughter's pride and joy. <laughs> She's a bit distraught about it at the moment. In just 36 hours, an ugly tumour has engulfed Pino's body. David and Pino. Hi. You're, you're David. Yeah. Where's Pino? Pino's in here. All right. Is, um, of course Pino's in there. Yeah. Hey Pino. Something All right. a little tumour. Okay, come on through and we'll have a look. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Most of the tumours that we see in mice are mammary tumours. Yep. So they're, they're essentially breast cancers. Right. Mice are used in human medical research to grow tumours so we can actually study how cancers behave and the best way to treat them. But unfortunately some of those genes have gone into pet mice. 
Daughter Elliot has given Dad strict instructions that she wants a medical update from Chris as soon as possible. The only hope, I guess, that, that she has is that if, if we can get in there and, and get around the back of that tumour and take it off. Yeah. But really not, not kill her in the process. Yeah, yeah. If I was to do nothing for little Pino right now, this tumour would continue to grow and would kill her. I'm willing to give it a go if, if you're willing to let me. Yep, yeah, sure, yeah. What is one person's vermin is the absolute centre of this little girl's universe. And really, if they make an appointment, then we'll see them. Around here, it's all creatures great and very small. Big day. <laughs> if that lump was unattractive before, I've got a bad feeling that once the fur is gone, it's not going to look any better. With her anaesthetic, this is probably the biggest challenge of all. You don't routinely carry mouse equipment in your average vet hospital, so you do have to make some adjustments. So I've cut a piece of glove out and we're going to put this over the top of the anaesthetic tubing and then tape it in place. That then gives you the, the bare bones of what's going to be a mouse anaesthetic mask. And you just hope that she's going to like it. This all gets very serious all of a sudden once the, the clock's ticking like this. She can really only be under anaesthetic for five, seven minutes, and that's about it. The idea is hopefully just to get in and around it and shell it out like a pea. It's working my way through these blood vessels that are feeding this, this immense tumour one by one, just trying to crush them as we, as we tear them in the hope they won't bleed anymore. People would think that, hey, you know, it's only just a mouse. But to Elliot, Pino isn't just a mouse. It's a big part of a life. And you, you carry that on your shoulders during the whole surgery. So she's been under for about six minutes now, so we're right at the end of our window. He's just breathing, just an occasional breath every now and then. And each time she does, you get filled with hope, but then she stops again. It's just, whew, whew. It's coming around the back of the tumour now. It's quite tightly adhered to the wall of the chest, which is going to make this difficult to get off. Even with so much going on during that surgery, I still had moments to think, geez, there's a little girl at school wondering how her little mouse is getting on. There we go. You can see how close that tumour was to growing into her chest. That's her lung right there and her heart beating behind it. So this is just millimetres away from, from absolute disaster. The anaesthetic's still going. We've got to find a way to get this skin back together neatly and tidily and not lose her in the process. With the stitching finished, Pino should wake up quickly. But as the minutes go by, the tiny mouse is not regaining consciousness. It's all right, hey, it's fine. You don't need to stress. There's a little girl waiting to see you. Yeah, you're at school right now, thinking about you. You've got to come around for her. That's just not really appropriate for you, is it? Pino might have survived the surgery, but there's still a huge fight ahead. To remove something like that would be a decent operation in a Labrador. We're talking about a mouse that weighs maybe 40 grams, 50 grams, and that's got to be 10 or 20 right there. She'd be going through a lot of shock right now. She's really just lost close to half the blood in her body. Yeah, at the moment, you can see she's hunched over, breathing deeply, just trying to force that blood around her body to satisfy the needs of her brain and all the different organs, because they'd be screaming out for blood, but the blood just ain't there. She's 
she's half the mouse she used to be. Get you looking good. I don't like the brush. Little Pino's recovering after Chris removed her massive tumour. The pet mouse nearly died on the operating table after a huge loss of blood. To nearly being dead in the surgery to all of a sudden being alive and, and full of energy, it, it's quite a transformation. She's now ready to go home to Elliot. I think it's time for some home delivery. How are you? Thank you. I've got someone to see you here. Oh, Pino. So she's no longer a full body Pino. She is Pino light. Oh. She is Pino light. Oh. I've got to tell you, I don't want to freak you out, but she she came pretty close to the edge. Oh, oh gosh. In a pretty bad way. That came out of her. It's pretty amazing that. Oh, yuck. I could not rest my head if she had died. I would just. It would be so sad. I kept on thinking about it, and then occasionally I felt like crying. If you'd have told me that my biggest achievement this week would have been saving a tiny mouse, then I probably would have laughed. But after meeting Elliot, it does feel like a huge accomplishment. Thank you so much. That's okay. You obviously love her so much, so the least I could do was, was give her a chance. Yes. I'm glad it worked out. See you, little buddy. Scott's making a quick detour before he heads to the practice. Em, do you feel better today? Glad to be in the park. Waiting for him at the park are a very special family. And she has Robert and Mary and their fur babies, Em and little Lucy. God didn't really gift, gift us with uh, children, but he did give us uh, another form of love, which are our pets. There you go. Good girl. You ready? You ready? Go get it. Robert chose 11-year-old Labrador M when she was just a puppy, a surprise for his soon-to-be wife. I guess the story starts with the fact that it was time to pop the question. And I came up with this idea of proposing on Christmas Day with a puppy. Ready? M strolled in our living room, and she had a big red bow. And uh, I also did this little stunt with cards to introduce M, M as in Mary, M as in Mommy, and M as, will you marry me? Hi guys, I felt like I'm interrupting on a beautiful family portrait moment here. But there is a heartbreaking reason why Scott is checking up on M today. Six months ago, she was struck down with a terminal cancer called hemangiosarcoma. How are you? You'd never imagine that this is a dog on chemo, would you? No. I mean, you no, are she... so happy. <laughs> you are so happy and you're so flirty, aren't yes, you? Yes, I am. Hey? Yes, I you am. You are. I mean, okay. she's she's just doing so, so she's well. Doing really well. Oh, I know. You're doing really well. Yes, you are. Good girl. Yeah. Good girl. Usually it lurks in the spleen, but it can spread throughout the body. And unfortunately, in M's case, it spread to her heart. Uh, but now it's also present in her muscles, in her lungs. It's pretty much everywhere. M survived several operations to remove the tumours throughout her body. After much thought, Robert and Mary then decided to try chemotherapy to attempt to prolong M's life. As a person that's got cancer, you get to choose and you understand that chemotherapy comes with a whole bunch of nasty side effects like nausea and hair loss, etc. So that is a conscious decision. For a dog, they have no idea what's going on. And so as an owner, that's a difficult sort of moral minefield to get around. We've had some struggles with nausea here and there, but I think we've, we've been able to control that with some medication. Yeah. And overall, I mean, she's happy, she's energetic, and as you can see, she loves to come to the park. <laughs> I don't want to say what would have happened without the chemo. I mean, we would have had to make a really tough decision. And, and wouldn't, without the chemotherapy, Em would not, not be here today. And... That wasn't, we weren't ready for that yet. M wasn't ready for that yet. You could, you could just tell there was too much life left in her. So. 
This afternoon, M will start her latest cycle of chemo at Scott's referral hospital, the Royal Veterinary College. I think it was the right choice, and I think uh, M's going to be around for quite a bit. Yeah. Well, I think so, and I hope she's still being the princess that I know she is. She's still drinking Evian yes. water, I'm yes. guessing. Yes, only Evian for M. Oh, of course. It's very particular. <laughs> Only Evian, that's ridiculous. I can't believe you've got mummy and daddy wrapped around your little paw, haven't you? It's great it's to see you. It's been a wonderful day. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. So we'll absolutely. Great soon. to see, see you. you. Okay, all the best. Bye, beautiful. Say bye. 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 Get your bolly. Come on, Em. Ready? Get your paw. Mary is bringing Em in for another round of chemotherapy. Hi, Mary. Hi, how are you? Yeah, I'm good. How are you? Good. Um, hello. The RVC oncology unit is invaluable. It provides an amazing service where dogs and cats are treated for cancer uh, in a caring and compassionate environment. Should we go through? Sure. Let's go. Come on, Come on in. In. But also, it's a lot more than that. It's actually supporting the owners through that process. So she's looking really good. Yeah, From she's doing, doing she well. She's doing this well. This will be the sixth round of chemo for M. Mary's grateful for the extra time she's had with her 11-year-old Labrador. Um, and appetite, how's that been? Appetite is great. <laughs> she has made a dramatic comeback. They've really uh, treated her well. She had to have three blood transfusions. By looking at her, you wouldn't even know she was sick. And activity-wise, she's um, good, she's good mm -hmm. going out and walk Walked. still. Mm -hmm. Yeah, brilliant. Mm -hmm. Everyone at the RVC is just tremendous. They're, they're very nice, we, every, very friendly, and they love M. <laughs> Vet nurse Carrie has been looking after M since her diagnosis. She's one of my favourite patients, and whenever I see that she's coming in on our list, I do get very excited. I'll see you later? OK. Bye, good girl. We love you. Oh. I'll see you in a little bit, OK? Good I'll be girl. here waiting. Come on, then. Good girl. Bye, bye, bye. Let's go. Bye. Come on. She is very sick. That there is, is no it. cure. So what we do is we try to improve her quality of life of what she has left. So that's our aim. Hello, Em. Hello. How are you? She's doing really well. Good. Hi. Today, Carrie and her colleague Hi. Nicola will be administering Em's treatment. Behind closed doors, the owners don't get to really see what goes on, but they get lots of cuddles, lots of fusses. We talk to them, you know, like, like, you, do talk, like you talk to babies. <laughs> the drugs used in this chemotherapy are potent. It's vital there are no mistakes. It's a type of drug that we're using if it's not delivered into the vein, but it can have a really nasty effect on the surrounding tissues, and it has been known to um, result in an amputation. So we have to be very, very aware of what we're doing. But behind the smiles, working with terminal patients takes a toll on the nurses. Good girl. You know the routine, eh? I'll get you home soon. Chicken, and then home, obviously. Em will eventually die, and her owners know that. It's very obvious that they love her very much, like what we do. I get upset when I think about that. Um, sorry. <laughs> and that's why I think it's important to remember we're trying to do our best with what we have and that these animals make a huge impact on a, on a person and it's a huge responsibility. Uh, Emma is really special. She's not the only special one. In fact, they are all special, and that's what makes it really hard. Just got to take this out now. Just put my hand there. Good girl. Nice and steady. All done. Ta -da. Good girl. Five months ago, um, M was, you know, it was really touch and go. She was at death's door. Oh, yummy. And to see her now, wagging her tail, bounding around and doing great is just a miracle, really. We didn't think that she would get this far and it's just amazing. And hopefully she'll have plenty of months left in her as well. Hi, sweetie. Good girl. Hi, baby. I'm very proud of her. She doesn't want to stop. She wants to go to the park. She wants to get up. She wants to do things. Thank you. Love you. OK. OK. Yeah, we'll see you next Wednesday. OK. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Ready? She's happy. And that makes it all the more better for us. Come 
ask pretty please. Ready? Stay. Go get it. Robert and Mary are lapping up the sunshine and taking it easy with M. Although they accept her days are numbered, they are determined to make the most of every moment. We particularly cherish days like today. I mean, we have to. Thanks to the great oncologists, I have to say that uh, days like today are for us magnificent. Good girl. <laughs> she's been so strong, stronger than both my husband and I think she's stronger than us. And uh, she's happy. She's just happy. And at this point, that's all that matters. All right, there you go. Hi, I'm Dr. Danny Dusek. If you love our show and want to see more amazing stories from the Bondi Vet team, just hit the subscribe button. Click that little notification bell and we'll see you for our next video. Hey guys, we've just had these brought in at reception. Do you want to come have a look? Look how cute they are. Inside at Sash, stray ducks are getting a noisy reception. Aww. They are real Hi, cute. Hello. Do you know what kind of ducks they are? I'm not too sure. So we've had two little adorable ducklings just brought in. A member of the public had found them on the side of the road. We're just going to have them looked over just to make sure they're nice and healthy. And we'll have our wildlife nurse have a look at them. So we'll just make sure everything's OK. So the eyes look good. Got a nice clean beak. Nothing stuck in your mouth. It seems to work. <laughs> Little wings. They seem to be intact. Now look at your feet. They both work. Don't seem to have any cuts or injuries. These ducklings look great. They've been well fed wherever they've been. They're in fantastic condition. It's a clean bill of health, and Jess is confident the pair aren't native ducks. Most commonly, white ducks are domestic ducks, and they don't actually belong in the wild. They belong as backyard pets. OK. So we're going to have to keep you here until we can find you somebody who's going to love you and give you a good home. Yeah, I think so, and I think they will. Hey, find you a home? <laughs> yes. Here we are. Oh, look at this. It's your new home. Look, we've got some new friends for you. A big pond to swim in. As for the two little lost ducklings, which were found wandering on the side of the road, they've now been adopted by Sash vet nurse and duck lover, Jess. I've fallen in love with the ducklings, so I've decided to take the ducklings home. Here we go. Go find your friends. We've got a great setup, it's like a duck palace. We've got the wading pool, we've got the running area, they've got their little house. I think it'll be great. I think they'll love it. Happy chuckles, always a good sign. I've got the perfect names picked out for our male and female ducklings, Andrew and Lisa. What do you think about that? You like those names? Yeah? But I'm hoping that because the ducklings are young, they'll be welcomed into the group with open arms open wings. 